Hi everyone, today we released the, the version 2 of the shader pack. Four years back I did this automotive procedural shader pack and by then we it evolved a lot and now we just updated it. So we I want to show you around and walk you through it because it changed a lot. So the first thing you can see is that on our website we added this. So we actually created a landing page for the shader pack just to explain roughly what, I, what was our philosophy there, that we are aiming for quality we want to abstract complexity from it and that now a lot of people are actually using the first version that I did back then. So I encourage you to check it out just to see roughly what we try to do. And then if you click on download, this will take you to the Gumroad page. Uh, and I want to explain a bit more there. Um, this is basically the page where we explain what the product is. So what is inside of it. And we go a bit further in the specifics so explaining and listing for instance all the different um, shaders that you can find there's carbon there's car paint plastics metal and also textile that is a big add-on compared to the first version uh, and some other stuff and also the installation is very different so i will show you that practically basically and some yeah frequently asked questions and one thing that you may notice is that there's a different structure up there where there's not only one free option, but there's actually two more options. So I want to touch a bit more on that. The free version is the same idea as on the first pack. So you get all the good stuff, you get all the nodes, and you get this time 60 shaders compared to the 24 of the first pack. So we just added much more stuff. But we also thought that we could bring actually more value to some people who are not about tinkering and trying to change the values themselves and see what they could uh, do from the, the shaders, but actually providing them like full on materials that are already ready to just being used. And in that sense, getting closer to an experience they would have with Keyshot, for instance, where everything is already there, you just need to drag and drop. And so we did this pro version, which has in total 985 uh, shaders or materials actually that are really like we took time to actually check them in different environments in different scenarios situation lighting etc and, and we really tried to do the best so that everyone could just have this very simple shading experience and then as we saw that companies were actually using it at scale we thought that it would be fair that if they use it for a lot of people, they just pay a bit more basically to reflect that. And here we, we consider that the, the pro version goes up to nine users. And if you get to 10 users, then you go to the team and you can use for as many people as you want. It doesn't matter. So if you, if you want to spread it to the whole organization where you work to like 100 people, that's, that's fine. We just want to make sure that there's a relation between um, the value we bring and what we get in return because we don't actually get paid to, to do those shaders so far. And we put quite some hours. And so once you pick the version you want, the whole experience is quite different from the first version. So I will show you that practically inside of Blender. So the main difference is that this time it's a zip file that you can install as a simple add-on. So you don't need to actually do any append or copy and paste all the different materials. You just need to go in your preferences, then in add-ons, click install, get the zip file. You don't need to unzip it at all. Um, and then it will show it like that. So you once it's uh, installed, so you just need to activate it. Um, and then here you go, you're ready. And so to start using it, you would go down, down there or anywhere actually, but change one of the regions to asset browser. And here, you can see that you suddenly have all of those icons and these are basically the shaders. So here I'm showing with the pro pack because that's the one that has the most and I think it can reflect more of what you, you can achieve basically. If we go to the rendered mode like this, I removed all the materials uh, on the car to show you. And so we would go like in car paint and let's take a metallic car paint and now you can just drag and drop on the car and it will shade it. 
And you can do that with as many as you want. You can just keep shading everywhere. And that's super easy and super convenient. I'm really glad they added this asset manager um, thing. So now let's go in carbon fiber and we will pick a four by four glossy or maybe actually a sanded carbon fiber. And let's put some four by four there just for all the arrow details. Forgot this one. As you can see, it's very easy to use. The, the drag and drop really makes it so simple. Um, let's do it here. We also try to handpick uh, the best type of colors and things we would want to use. So you have really nice uh, shades basically that we, we try to really fit. Here is not the best um, outdoor to show you, but if I change the HDRI, You can see the paint in all its beauty. So here it's a very dark uh, purple that is very vivid in the light, but very dark otherwise. And this looks pretty cool. Let's add some carbon fiber around there. And basically compared to the first version, there's not a single node that is the same. Like we, we actually took all the learning, but we started from scratch um, and just tried to make everything better in terms of performance, in terms of what you can do with it. And in even things like projection, like for instance, here the carbon fiber already does the, the um, uh, fishbone pattern, which is something common in this kind of, uh, this kind of cars with carbon fiber and you don't need to project it at all. It has the UV already embedded in the sense that it calculates by itself how it should lay it on the car based on the, the normals of the surface. Now let's look at it with interior. So here I have this really nice model from Guillermo Mignot. Um, and so I want to show you that we actually added a lot more stuff for interior design. So you can see in textile, that there's Alcantara, fabric and leather. And inside of those, there's also subcategories. For instance, fabric as plain and twill type of weaving. And then within them, you also have cotton and synthetic. Uh, and same like leather as fine or more grainy. And the fine one also has perforated. So you can actually have patterns there. And so let's see here, how would we go with that? So let's say we want some orange Alcantara. Again, you can just drop it easily, basically. Let's put some carbon fiber everywhere because it, because it looks cool. Four by four, glossy. And yeah, here you go. You can just put it everywhere. And you can see that this is much closer to what you would get on a key shot or a similar um, solution where you don't need to tinker around and spend time doing your own nodes, you just drop it and that's good enough to actually render something. Let me show you a bit of the, the twill uh, fabrics. The cool thing with that is that you can actually have patterns because you can change the fiber, like the color of each fiber and how it repeats. And so you can get to much more complex or much more simple uh, renders, just depending on what you try to achieve. You can go also a bit crazy by combining colors in, in some original way. I will stand with something quite standard here. I also want to show you that we included some shaders that are usually quite hard to get, and that's the beauty of procedural. Everything is done by math, so the only limit is what the time you spend to actually make it look, make the math look like the real thing. Um, and for instance, it's quite difficult to get a nice looking forged carbon from 
the internet because usually it's just about the the color and it doesn't really have the the light behavior um maybe this object is not the best one to show you uh, the forged carbon but if i put it there then you can see that it really reacts to light uh, the same way real forged carbon does and so you can get much more complex light behavior just from the fact that everything is done by math and so there's no limit um of like trying to get a normal map that is very tricky to create and you can zoom in as much as you want so you can see how like each fiber tears um etc because there's no resolution there's no map behind so you can go as far as you want we also have stuff like in the first um in the first one we have like screens this time there's two types with different uh, type of pixels and they're just a placeholder image, but you could totally change it to uh, whatever UI you created for, for your concepts or whatever you want to show on the screen, basically. And this one, for instance, says uh, dotted LEDs, whereas this one is a more traditional LCD, LCD screen. And for each shader, you have a set of parameters. So if you go here in your shader editor, you can actually change everything you want in terms of like the pixel density, the luminosity, um, everything has a lot of settings. So you should check every time if you want to have something slightly different. In this case, I will just shut down the screen because it doesn't make sense if we don't have the, the actual maps. But like if you take the carbon fiber, for instance, You can see with this one that you can change the pattern type. So how how the the width is made basically. But you can also change like the curvature of the fiber depending on what you want to get visually. And then you can have options like the the fish bone I was talking about earlier. Let's say we put here we link the materials so that we have the carbon on the on the dashboard as well. You can see that it, it still does have this um, this fish bone in the center, uh, but you can decide to remove it. And then you just have one direction of carbon fiber everywhere, basically. And so that's a lot of settings that you can play with. And the goal is that we provide you to the closest point you can get uh, to what you want. And then you can do the final tweaking yourself to get exactly where you want. The same way you can change like if there's fish bone or not, you can actually change the the projection. So you can switch from UV to triplanar. This is useful if you already have your UVs and you want something very specific there. Let's go on with some more um, shading. So let's put, let's say the Alcantara there and there, there. And maybe we want something like a bit darker here or actually here and something lighter there. And one thing you can see here is that the dark gray Alcantara looks very black. Uh, the reason for that is that actually the normals are not correct. So that's one thing you need to check is that the normals are in the correct direction. Otherwise it has, it looks weird like the, the shader would behave weirdly, so we prefer to just have it black. So in that case, you can just go in edit mode, press Alt N, and then flip your normals. That way it will be correct and it will look as intended. We can go through a bit uh, more shaders. In the metals, you have like aluminum. For instance, we can put some bit blasted aluminum there, which usually, usually looks pretty cool, especially with carbon fiber and about carbon fiber actually I want to show you something else <clears throat> that you may experience where let's say you put some carbon fiber on this part and you can see that the pattern doesn't really work we don't see anything only if we zoom in really a lot and so the reason for that is that since we don't use uh, UVs by default because we want to make sure that you have just this easy time placing the shaders. We are using 
something called triplanner, where we create the projection, and this is based on the the object's uh, properties, basically. So the scale is very important. So in this case, we can see that the scale is wrong here. So I can just do Control A and apply the scale, and then I get back like what I intended. Let's bring the fishbone again to have something nicer. Let's drop the fiber curvature and do a four by four. And you can go on with that. There's also plastics. So we have the classic like glossy, matte and more like rough, which has more texture. But then we also did like recycled plastic, which is this combination of different colors, basically of plastic that would be put together afterwards. Then we have the speckled one where it's, I can show you actually, it's more like a normal plastic with painted dots on top. Uh, and you can change the color of each of those. <clears throat> As you can see here, you have the main, the second and the third. Um, we also have some rubber, some transparent plastics, all kind, all kind of stuff really. So yeah, that's about it. That's the the new shader pack that we did, and we're excited to let you try it and tell us what you think. We really put a lot of effort in this one, and. We really want to make it the best as possible. So don't hesitate if you have anything that you think is missing or could be better. And overall, we think that this can be a much better help uh, compared to the first version where even if you take the free version, all the shaders are much better. Everything is much easier to use, much more consistent. And hopefully you can do great stuff with it. So looking forward to hear about it. And I'll see you in the next one.